Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today is the second Monday of Plant-Based Classics with Lauren Burnick, and she's going to be making an easy, cheesy, save the chicken casserole. It actually has another name, but I've never heard things to make. Hello. Um, you know, I just think, what do I want to eat? Uh, it's, I got it good. It's so good right now. Actually, Hannah brought her um, Brussels sprouts with like a, you know, vegan bacon salad last time. It was so yummy. She's such a good cook. Yeah, she's amazing recipe creator. And, and, and her picture, she, I use her for my photos and she's an extraordinary yes. food stylist and photographer. She's been on the show a few times. She's adorable. She really is. She's a, and a lovely human. So yes. I love so, your shirt. You you also have see see. I love when you come on because you have such a great sense of style. The hair, aww. the clothes. You know, you should have your own little like uh, something or other. Well, I do. Every second Monday, I have my show on Chef AJ's channel. <laughs> so, All right. Somebody's uh, saying they can't see us, but we need more people to say it than one person. So, can they you can't guys see us? Well, I can see you and I can hear you. So. Guys, especially those watching on YouTube, could you just say like that you can see us and hear us or worst case scenario, we could start over, but we don't want to because we already have such lovely comments. Like Diana says, I love Lauren Mondays. That's a great name for Aww. it. So Gina Hi, said, Diana. Better now. So, yep. Diana says she sees you both. We only care about Diana. Okay. No, just kidding. Thank you, Diana. <laughs> Regina says it's freezing, but um, let's keep going because I think it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put it on my phone just to be sure because this recipe is too great for you guys to miss. Oh, my goodness. Are we okay? We're yeah, good to I, keep I going? Think we're okay. Let me, let me, let, you know what I do is I, I go look on my own phone, my own show, and uh, I'll see what we see. Okay. See what we can see. In the meantime, tell us where you got your shirt because I want that shirt. I love <laughs> that kind of style very much. Got my shirt at Nordstrom Rack. Oh, yeah. and I'm all, nobody is going to see enough in this time. My cousin was so distraught that when I was bending over the last time, you could see down my shirt. And so my tatas are covered up to my neck this time. She was, she was dying. She was like, you have to cover up. I'm like, I didn't mean to. You That's think I want people looking? It, it, it looks great. And our, our live studio audience handed me this note that we are okay now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, God. Okay. okay. Well, the first thing I'm going to do for our King Ranch chicken casserole is I'm going to start um, rehydrating the butler soy curls. So this is going to be in place of the chicken that we would have used. And um, so Butler soy curls, if you're not familiar with them, are surprisingly a whole food. It's just a whole non-GMO soybean. It looks like this, it's like crispy and hard. So you have to soak it uh, in some water to hey, rehydrate them. Hey, Laura, is your cousin's name S. Riggenbogen? Yes. That's okay, she's hilarious. Story. She goes in capital. She goes, I was not distraught, just noticing. <laughs> <laughs> and she loves yeah, your wardrobe is... selection today as well. She agrees. And people, oh. butler soy curls. I wish there was a soy curl that wasn't made of soy because I'm allergic because I like the idea of soy curls, you know? Right. And I put in the show notes because I know you're allergic, the alternative, because you always ask, what could I do if I can't eat soy curls? Um, Instead of soy curls, you're going to add a cup of black beans and a cup of organic frozen corn if you don't do soy curls. And if you don't do nutritional yeast, which comes in later, you're going to do a half a cup of cashews. So I got you covered. Um, okay. okay, so right now we're just waiting. This is going to like rehydrate. It takes about 10 minutes. And in the meantime, I'll start chopping. I'm going to start doing... Um, a poblano pepper, a red pepper, and an onion. I'm just going to chop them up. And I picked a poblano pepper instead of a green pepper because um, it's not like spicy, like a jalapeno or a serrano, but it has a, I like the flavor better than a green pepper. So that's why I picked a poblano. So I'm just going to start yeah. chopping up. 
Do you like poblano peppers? I love it. And I'm, I'm with you. I don't love green peppers. I think they give me indigestion. I like the red, the yellow, the orange, not so much the green. Um, yeah, that's what I've heard. A lot of people say that. When I was growing up, like I hated green peppers and uh, I like them now, but I just think that they're, I don't know, they're a little, I don't know. I just like the poblano better. So I just slice off the ends of these and then slicing out the seedy part and then I'll just chop them up. Makes it easier. My dog is locked up in my husband's office or she'd be out here helping me whenever she hears me start chopping. She just comes <laughs> a running. She loves it. She loves the peppers. Um, he, I don't know if you're supposed to give peppers to a dog or not, but she I loves them so much. Probably. Have you ever heard? I don't know. I don't, I would guess not. <laughs> Probably not, but I give them to Daisy anyway, but I don't know. I probably should look that up. Okay. So I'm just rough chopping everything. Cause then I have one of these little choppers. I think I've used this before. That's cool. Make, yeah, it's easy. It makes everything easy. So you just put the thing in here and then it goes into the bottom. You don't have to like chop everything into little teeny tiny pieces. Makes a lot of noise. Oh my gosh. That's so funny that my cousin is on. That's so nice that family's watching. Gina gives her dog red peppers and he loves them, but you're not giving your dog the spicy ones, are you? No, just like the red. Yeah, then I sure, I thought that's fine. I thought you were giving your dog poblanos, you know? No, I don't give her poblanos. I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah, everything's falling on the floor as usual. I make such a mess. Me too. I am the worst. I need somebody there like when I'm cooking. Just clean up crew. That's, that would be my dream. You know, I don't need a chef. I need a, 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 an assistant to follow me around. Does Bailey come in and help you? No, she has just never been interested in that kind of thing. It's weird. Really? She's a princess, you know, she's not, she's not going to do that. That's dog behavior. Clean up. Yeah. Dog behavior. That's hilarious. She doesn't, she's just very funny. I love dogs. Don't you? I, you know, I love dogs. So I love all animals, but I do. I love dogs. My husband loves this dog like crazy, but all he, you know, we had a really old dog and she died during the pandemic. And so he's like, well, now that we don't have a dog, we're going to travel and blah, blah. But then after like six months at home, I'm like, I need a dog. It cannot be locked up in this house. No dog. We're getting a dog. And we ended up with a puppy And now that the pandemic's over, he's like, what did we do? Are we like, why did we do that? I'm like, just shush. We're, we're having the, you know, now we have a dog and that's it. And he's like, we made a huge mistake. And I'm like, don't don't say that about poor Daisy. She's such a little love bug. But now she's three already. She's really maturing. She's becoming like a, you know, like a, not such a pain in the butt anymore, you know, being a, such a good puppy. But yes, I think life's not worth living if you don't have a dog. Kind of. I, it's so, I always say a house is not a home without some kind of a pet. I agree. I really do. When I was growing up, my mom is such a sucker for animals. And so, you know, she still eats meat and she loves animals. And I'm like, mom, you can't be an animal lover and still eat them. She's like, but I don't know those animals. I'm like, oh my God, mom. You know, uh, that, that's what, that was said to me very, very young by a veterinarian. How, if you love animals called dogs, how do you eat animals called cows? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm not eating them. It took like one second. Right. I know. I don't know why she, she can't buy into that, but it's okay. Whatever. That's how she is. Um, but growing up, she was such a sucker. I had 4 million animals. She's also like a real clean freak. So, I mean, every day we were like cleaning cages. I had like 
gerbils and guinea pigs and cats and dogs. And I had bunnies. I had everything. And she could always be suckered into one more thing. Okay. So again, I'm probably about to chop my fingers off. Don't look. And then I took the peppers out and I put them in the bowl because I want to saute the onions first. So I just, now I'm going to chop the onions in this thing. Ugh, they're just sliced in circles. And then I'm not doing that. Ugh. I guess I could have done this in advance, but this recipe goes pretty quickly, actually. I don't like this weird onion skin. I got to oh, peel it down. Uh, Debbie would like to know where you got that fabulous vegetable chopper, what it's called, and where you got it. Is that Debbie Poyman? Well, let me look. Uh, we'll get. Oh, That's my in law, my sister. Uh, knock myself off the chat, which often happens. So let me look. Um, and I don't know where I got this. I think my husband bought it for me. He likes to buy me kitchen gadgets for, you know. Presents. Debbie Larcher Weston. Debbie Larcher what? Weston. Okay. I don't know. I don't know that, Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Um, I think he got this at, he might have got this like some fancy place like William Sonoma or, but I bet you, you can just order it online. Amazon for sure. Order it on Amazon. Um, Got one in my Amazon but, store. You can also get them at Bed Bath & Beyond for about 20 bucks. They're uh, a wonderful brand is called the, oh, what's it called? The Vidalia Chop Wizard as a good one. Yes, line. I used to have that. I used to have the Vidalia Chop Wizard and I broke it. Um, Yep. Sm Smarter Image is. makes one. So it'd be pretty easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. They're easy to find, but they're fantastic. And it also has like, you could pull this out and it has like a, and this out and it has like a slicer one. So you could make like potato chips or some, you know, a thinner, thin, thinner size. But anyway, okay. So now my onions are done um, and I'm going to start sauteing these guys. Let me take my camera over here. Okay, so now I'm gonna start sauteing. Why don't I know which burner? I yeah. swear. I that happens. Know. That happens to me all the Why? time. Too. Yep. I've lived in this house like almost four years. I still don't know which burner does what. Okay, so I'm just heating up my pot. A little bit. I like to get it nice and hot before I throw my onions in. Okay. And I like to chop everything up in advance before I start. Like some people will chop their onion and then while that's cooking, they'll chop their peppers. But I don't like to do that. I like to have everything, you know, chopped at once, ready to go. All right. Oh, people are saying that Bed Bath & Beyond went out of business. Or it's going, or it's going out of so, uh, Guys, I'll pull yeah. up a link for you and put it in the chat of the one that I have. Um, you can, and then I bet you can uh, get one at a good price. I get with their, so what some, somebody said, like some comic said, if only they had just charged 20% more, maybe they'd still be in business. You know that <laughs> damn That's <piece>. hilarious. <laughs> um, I know. That is really I funny. That. I know. Okay, so those are going. I like to get it nice and hot. Get that going. Make sure there's not any weird pieces in there. Maybe when I'm chewing and then all of a sudden I get something, you know, I don't want to get some weird piece of something oh, like man. onion skin. There's just so many on Amazon, guys. It's ridiculous. They're like oh, $70 really? to $40. So guys, just yeah. put in Chop Wizard or Vegetable Chopper. There's so many and they come with different blades. It shouldn't be very hard to find. Yeah. And like you said, it's like, I use it probably has all them the time. The top. Um, your cousin wants to know if you heated your pan before you added the onions. Yes, I did. I heated the pan, then I added the onions, and then I wait till it... Uh, gets a little brown in there and then I'll add some broth and declaze the pan. But yeah, I always like to heat the pan up first. Do you do that? 
stuff, AJ? Yes, definitely. Just, just get it nice and hot. And I do that little water test where you put a little drop of water when the ball dances around, you know it's hot enough. Right. You know it's hot. Let's see what's going on. Okay, now I'm going to I'll deglaze it a little. It's starting to get a little brown in there. That's where the good yummy stuff comes up. Do you ever do your onions in advance and then just take them out of the freezer? You know, I don't do that, but I really should. Is it, they're still good, right? But I've done that and I've, I've roasted garlic. I don't do it often, but I have done it. And it's as in a recipe, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know why I don't do that. That's kind of dumb, but it'd be good to have everything done in advance. Um, okay, well, that's going. While that's going, I'm gonna, okay, so now you can see how fluffy these are. They're hydro, here, I'll put them under this camera. So you can see how hydrated those are now. The soy curls, they're not all crunchy. Right. Um, I am going to dump them out into a colander. Maybe one day we'll be able to buy them, you know, already sauteed for us without oil. What? The onions? Yeah. You think that's going to happen? No, night. That would be so awesome. I mean, I guess the world is getting better, but, you know, the world is getting more vegan, but it feels like just feel like the no oil thing is having a really hard time catching on. I don't know why. Yeah, people Do you feel like it's yeah, people on? like just insist they need fat for their brain or something. Right. And even if they do need, even if that was true, you can get it from whole sources, not seeds, avocados. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. So I drained the soy curls in a colander, but I'm squeezing the water out. You can see a lot of water still comes out and I'll just put it back in my bowl. But I like to get all that water out, get it kind of so it's not mushy. Otherwise, it's ugh, it has a gross consistency. I would normally just do this over the sink, but I want you to be able to enjoy this water squeezing out. Okay, let's see. My onions are probably burning behind me. Okay. Let me check on my onions. Those look pretty good. I'm going to put the oh. Oh. technical difficulties. That's your peppers. Put the peppers in as well. Get those going in there. You're it's saying you would want to buy onions already cooked. I would. I mean, if I trusted the person that made them. Stephanie says, what is the taste and texture of soy curls? Is it like tofu? You know, it's not like tofu. Like plain like this. I mean, I guess it's like tofu in the way that um, it picks up the flavors. So it really doesn't have much of a flavor. It's something that you definitely have to season. Um, a lot of times I just make this like, uh, oh, sorry, guys. I make, um, I make barbecue soy curls and they're really delicious because it takes on the flavor of whatever you're making. Um, so today I'm just really going to season them up like I would chicken. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's like tofu in that way, but it just has a different consistency. What I also like to do with the soy curls is there's a lot of big long pieces in there is just cut them up with my kitchen scissors oh, and make them into shoes. 
I know. Yeah. So good. Just make them into bite-sized pieces so that you don't have any huge pieces. And then I'm just going to season them up with some, um, like, no salt stuff and or whatever it's called, salt-free seasoning. I'll do a tiny bit of smoked paprika, some pepper, maybe some onion or garlic powder. Just season them up a little bit. Just something, whatever you would put on chicken. And this is essentially like a Mexican food dish. So maybe a little cumin, whatever you would use in like Mexican food type dishes, maybe a little chili powder. But that's all going into the actual casserole. So you don't want to, you know, overkill it. All right. I guess I got these pieces cut up pretty good. Make sure there's no giant pieces in here. Sorry for anybody that this grosses out, but I my hands are clean. You're not eating this anyway. I know. But I use I, my hands. Yeah. When I cook, I really. I know you get all get all the love in it. You do get all the love in it, and I don't know. It's like a sensory thing. You have to touch it. So, but my hands are clean. I wash them thoroughly before the show. My dish towels clean. I don't know why I'm explaining myself to you, but okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I've had people complain, I, you know, on YouTube, it's like, you know, I touched my dog or something. I'm like, what? Well, you're not eating this. So. You're not eating it. You really come to my house for dinner. I'll clean up my ass. Okay. Let me get my spices. Uh, let's see. What do I want to put in here? Okay. All right, so yeah, now I'm just gonna put no salt seasoning. I'm gonna stir it up to make sure everything. Make sure all the pieces get some. Like I said, it's not very flavorful. Uh, put some garlic powder. I want to put pepper too. I have this cute little pepper pot. I just love it. Um, put a little cumin in here. Oh, found a big piece. Okay. And I'll put a little smoked paprika. This I get my measuring spoon out because you don't want to go overboard with that. It's a little bit goes a long way with that, with the smoked paprika. Love smoked paprika. I do too. I never use regular paprika. Me neither. Waste distance. I'm excited for our improv class on Thursday. Yeah, I can't wait. That was really something that's never happened in three years where the teacher had to cancel. Had to cancel. There's oh, another prominent plant-based person in the class. You don't know her, but she's from uh, Plant Based Metro in New York, so you'll meet her. Oh, nice. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's seasoned up. Let's see how this, oh, this looks good. This is nice and cooked down. I turned the heat down because it was getting, that's that a beautiful. What's that thing called in the South? Is it the Holy Trinity when you put onions? I think it's onions, celery, and carrots. Or, or green pepper. What's, is it called? Green, is yeah, it called? I've heard that before, but I'm not sure what's in it. Um, I should probably know. Okay. Mirepoix is onion, carrot, and celery. So in the South, uh, something is substituted. Maybe the, I don't know. Guys, if you know, tell me in the chat. If it's the South, it's probably a jalapeno. Okay. Now I'm going to make the cheese sauce. So um, you always put the liquid in the bottom of your Vitamix or your high-speed blender. So this is a cup of vegetable broth. 
Holy Trinity, celery, onions, and peppers. Gina, is it green pepper though? That's interesting. I guess, yeah, it could be probably red or green peppers. I just like red better. Okay, so I got my vegetable broth, um, a heaping cup of chickpeas. This is what's gonna give it its creaminess. This is what I also use in my macaroni cheese recipe. So I do a heaping cup, it's almost a can, but it's not quite, your dog can have some chickpeas left over or you can put some in your salad, you'll have a little bit left over. If you wanna go nuts, you can put your whole can of chickpeas in there. Uh, half a cup of nutritional yeast, quarter cup of cashews. So you know I'm not big on the nuts, but it's a quarter cup for a whole giant casserole and it does give it some creaminess. So I'm gonna say that's okay. And a half a cup of salsa. If you don't like spicy, use mild salsa because you're putting in the Rotel tomatoes with green chilies already. Um, I like spice, so I'm using a, a medium salsa. And let's see what else goes in here. And then we have all of our spices. I went ahead and I did all my spices already, but and my garlic. So it's uh, a tablespoon, oh, a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm just going to do it over my hand in case any seeds come out. It's about a tablespoon. Do you have a favorite uh, brand of salsa? I actually just use the grocery store brand, H-E-B brand. Um, H-E-B is this fabulous Texas grocery store. I just used up the last of it, but this is what it looks like. It's H-E-B thick and, thick and chunky, medium, organic salsa. I also like just the store brand at uh, Whole Foods. Their organic one, I think they have a really good salsa too. So, you know, you could use fancy ones, but that's that's just the ones that I buy on a regular basis. Um, so then we're gonna put two cloves of garlic, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, cumin, chili powder, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, and then salt and pepper are optional. I didn't put any salt. I did put pepper because I put a little turmeric and you know, you're supposed to use the pepper with the turmeric to activate it. I assume that's true. I read it on the internet. So it can only be true. Okay, so I got all my spices in there. Let's see. Let's make sure I got everything. Pretty notorious for leaving things out. I think everything's in there now. This is going to be our cheesy sauce. So let me turn my back on you one second and run my Vitamix. I apologize. Guys, while she's blending, just to let you know, there's a bonus show at 4 p.m. today with Ross Sheffian. She's making durian cookies. I haven't been posting the link, but I guess I should if you are interested in the raw bundle that is another four days. And then tomorrow is feeling great with Lissa and Nate. Uh, Tuesday is at 2 p.m. now. So for a while while I'm in my class. So, oh, I just saw a text something. I missed something in the chat. Thank you, Jesse. Where is it? Did I miss anything? Oh, no, I got it. Yeah, I, sometimes I lose my chat, but it's back. You lose my your chat? chat? My chat is back. Your chat's back. Okay, so now I got the, the cheesy sauce made. And so uh, let me put, I turned off my peppers because I lost my timing here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just add my little soy curl mixture to the peppers and incorporate that. I mean, it looks like chicken, right? I mean, except for better, because it's not a dead animal in your pot. Yeah. So good. I was thinking about that today. Why would people want to eat a living thing? It's just so <sighs> bizarre to me. It's so crazy. And then, you know, I guess, you know, I did it too at one point. It's just like you just accept it that people, when you're growing up, they give you chicken, you eat it, and you accept it. And then when you get older, it's something you really have to think about. Um, all right. So 
that's yeah this is way better now i'm going to put the cheesy sauce in that oh it looks good smells really good too you guys are missing half the experience because you can't smell it i know it looks amazing and then i'm gonna put the rotel tomatoes this is so texas putting my rotel tomatoes in there be sure don't put your rotel tomatoes in and i'm turning the heat off now because i don't really want this to start sticking to the pan how is um, rotel different than other canned tomatoes it has green chilies in it and then i'm going wild today and i'm putting in like a quarter cup of corn i didn't i don't think i put that in the recipe um but i was like oh when i was saying that you could sub um corn and black beans if you don't want to use soy curls i was like i'm gonna put a little bit of corn in there that sounds really good and that's it now i'm just going to transfer it to a pyrex dish I mean, that was super easy, wasn't it? Yep, that was easy. We need that button. <laughs> that was easy. I know, and you know what? I didn't even, um, God, I think, I think the last time I really wore myself out, that was like an extra crazy recipe. Had so many different components, so I made the, um, what did I make last time? Oh, French onion soup, because I had to make so many things. The cheese, the onion soup, the bread. Oh, this one is really easy. It's really just like a one pot meal. Okay. Oh, I forgot. The other thing that you need to do is break your tortilla chips up into this. So I baked these. These are just organic corn tortillas that I threw right on the rack um, in my oven, 375 for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. You just have to keep an eye on it. Some people layer this up like a lasagna. I don't like to do that. I just like to throw it all in the pot, mix it all up. I normally do like six, six of these, but if you, you know, you can eyeball it and decide if you think that's too much. All right, I got this all. I'm just gonna mix it in there now. Some people don't do tortilla chips they do like just corn tortillas and cut them into strips and then like I said layer it up like a lasagna but I actually like the crunchy texture with all this so I prefer to do it this way okay now I'm just going to transfer it to a pyrex dish everybody has pyrex right Right, I guess so. Or some kind of generic version of that. This is a 13 by nine. I know I should do this away from myself, but not that coordinated. Okay. Let me just get the rest out. Oh, this smells heavenly. Even though I've been eating this for weeks on end. <laughs> And you can make this for Mother's Day with like, I mean, I know it's not a traditional thing, but make it for Mother's Day with like a big salad or a big bowl of greens, maybe make up some biscuits, some mimosas, and your mom will like that. Okay. Let me move this back over here. And then you can see it's all pretty. Pretty. It's all pretty. And then you you're just gonna pop it in the oven, 375. You're gonna cover it in foil at first. So first you'll do foil, cover it, bake it. Um, no, 375, I think I just said 325. So you're gonna just bake it at 375. 
for 20 minutes and then you are going to uncover it and bake it for about 10, 15 more minutes and it'll be all bubbly and then it's gonna come out looking like that. Let me see oh. that. Wow, show it again. You gotta talk. Oh, sorry. Um, and then it looks like that and it's all yummy and brown. It's not bubbly because this has cooled down a little bit, but I'm gonna plate it up so you can see. Boy, that went really fast, but we could talk. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> a couple of people like Susanna and Gina have pot envy and wanna know what size your La Crusette is. Oh, I don't, I feel like it's maybe like two and a half quarts. Is that a thing? I don't know, where will I know, on the lid? I don't know. Let me see. Uh, it says 28 on the lid, but I don't know what that means. Maybe it says on the bottom. Let me see. I don't know. I feel like it's two and a half quarts, but I'm not really sure. I don't know. But you know, keep your eyes peeled because I actually got that one at um, I want to say like Marshalls or Home Goods. It was something I had not planned on buying, and I saw it there that day, and I was like, "Oh crap! This is such a good deal!" Like I didn't want to spend the money that day, but I knew I'd re totally regret it if I didn't buy it. So I bought it, and I do not regret it. It's such a good. I use that thing every single day. Okay, I'm going to plate this up. And then you can um, top it with like, just depending on how you eat, if you eat like vegan sour cream or if you eat uh, avocados, you can put that on top. I generally don't do that. So I'm just topping mine with... Um, I chopped up some tomato and some red onion and some cilantro. And then you can do like some little pickled jalapenos. And there you go. Voila. What do you think? I think it looks beautiful. That is really good. And it didn't take that long. No, it didn't. I really, it went really fast. All right, let me taste it. Even though I already know what it tastes like. I'll make sure it tastes good for you. Oh man. I haven't made it with the corn yet. Mm, oh my God. It's so, I swear to God, you have to make this. It looks it's amazing. delicious. It looks amazing. It's so delicious. So yummy. And it's good like to make if you have company coming over because then, you know, you're not in the kitchen. It's just like a one pot thing. Like I said, just make like a big old salad with that or a big pot of greens. And it, you have something pretty healthy because the soy curls aren't bad. You have peppers and onions. You have garbanzo beans. So it's not really anything terrible. There's no, yeah. you know. You're like a one pot wonder. One of the viewers says, do you have any portion control issues with such delicious food? Um, you know, I don't. There are certain things that I really don't cook because I can't stop eating them. Uh, this isn't one of them. The things that set me off, like if I make like some kind of really good dip, I, I can't stop eating dips. That's like the thing that it, it makes me crazy. Like I just can't stop till it's gone. Um, not like a huge dessert person, but once in a while it'll hit me the right way where I'm like, I can't stop eating this dessert, but I'm more of like a, you know, savory person. Um, but yeah. But generally, I just eat till I'm getting, I'm trying to eat till I'm not full. What is it, the 80%? Sorry, Hachi Boo, that is Ari. so hard. It's so hard. Because I don't know that I'm full until I'm full. I don't know what yes. 80% is because I don't feel 80%. I only feel, <laughs> I don't feel 100%. I don't feel tardy. I don't feel 80%. Yeah, exactly. So I'm trying to work on that. That's not really going well, I have to tell you. Um, I don't yeah, think I our just, ancestors did that. I think they just ate to satiation. Oh, no. They ate till they were full, I'm sure. But they also just couldn't run to the grocery store and get more. So they had to take their opportunity. But um, yeah, 
So I just eat till I'm full, basically. And uh, I don't have, you know, I don't, like I said, only if certain foods trigger me and I, I really just don't make them unless I'm having company over. I'll make it for other people. Kathy um, says that she has a nut allergy. So for the cashews in the sauce, do you recommend white beans, sunflower seeds, leave them out? How about cauliflower or tofu? Yeah, to- you could use it. I, I wouldn't do white beans because you already have the um, garbanzo beans in there. I mean, you could do more garbanzo beans. You don't have, you have a nut. So can she can use nutritional yeast then. So it's just the cashews. I think that you're fine just doing either leaving them out. Sunflower seeds would be great. Um, or so a little bit of tofu. Yeah. Hokum tofu. Tahini that's somebody is suggesting. Marler. That's a great idea. And Tahini. Uh, a lot of the viewers like Melissa are saying how delicious it looks. So next month is June. It's not a big holiday month. Father's Day. Yeah. Is that a big deal? I mean, men just want, I mean, what, I mean, what do men want? <sighs> uh, you know, barbecue. I don't know, but yeah, you could do the soy curls, barbecue soy curls. That's I'm telling you, that's a hit. Like, um, you know, maybe I have to think about what I'm going to do next month. You guys always give me good suggestions. Okay, I have a suggestion. I don't know how you or anybody would do this, but since this show is called plant-based classics and the purpose is to reinvent the classics, have you ever done a souffle? <laughs> that might be above my abilities. I don't know. I never even did a souffle back in the day. Yeah, I okay, made it once and it was when before it was before I was vegan. My uncle used to love a, a he was married to a Swiss lady, my aunt, and they loved a liqueur called Au Grand Manier. And I made a oh, yeah. Au Grand Manier. And uh, <sighs> there was a lot of beating of eggs, but I, you know, I did it once. It was a lot of work, but I'm wondering if you could do a vegan souffle. So I guess instead of the eggs, you use aquafaba. I don't know. I I was just trying to think of what foods are classics, you know, I mean, yeah. You know, what are are classics, you know, that's Um, something that I never even made back in the day. Um, Well, what, you know, what classics, what do you guys think of classics? The the recipe Candice is in the show notes. If you don't see it, you have to refresh your screen. Show notes are only visible on YouTube right below the video. Um, can you do portobello burgers and healthy potatoes as a request? Can you do nice dessert from fruits? Asks Marilyn. Um, yeah. Can you do some bacon? You know, Nick from Local Spicery just came out with a bacon seasoning. And all I've been putting it on is mushrooms. But I'm wondering if like we could thinly slice eggplant or something and make. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Maybe so. Uh, Diana says, I don't know. carrot dogs and cauliflower. Everything you make is so fantastic. Whatever you come up with is going to be creative and delicious. So. Yum. Carrot dog. I love carrot dogs, but there's already such good recipes out there for that. I don't need to redo that because yeah. I always make a, what is it? What brand about, new vegan. I make. What about corn dog? Have you done a corn dog? Ugh. Does that's, that sound good? <laughs> that's a, how do you really feel? <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I, that know, just, I, I don't just, consider a corn dog a classic, by the way. Just, you know, and I think the classics like <laughs> Julia Child, you know, and uh, Paul Prudhomme and everything. A grass fed. Oh, that's, that's funny. That's hilarious. Well, we'll think of something. It'll be good. Well, I'll, I'll like think it. of something. Why don't, since, since June is Father's Day, why don't you ask your husband what he would like in Father's Day? And uh, oh, maybe that's a good maybe, idea. Maybe create that for him. Something that you haven't okay. done, something that you haven't done on this show. It does you don't always have to make a new recipe, of course. Just something you haven't done on the show. Okay, that sounds fair enough. Yeah, like and but be, I'd like beef bourguignon. Well, not not with beef. you know. I thought about that. What with mushrooms? I guess. Yeah, with That's portobello mushrooms, and portobello. even if you use wine, maybe you could have like a, a, a an alcohol free alternative for people, like balsamic mm-hmm. vinegar. But beef bouillon with those little pearl onions, mm-hmm. potatoes, Ooh, doesn't that sound delicious? That might be good, yeah, that does sound good. It does sound okay, good. Well, makes- I could see I could see the wheels turning. You know, uh, Debbie saying Father's Day are, is often picnic foods. Uh, Susan wants shepherd's. Susan's husband wants shepherd's pie. Anyway. 
the wheels are turning. Well, Lauren, it's so yeah, fun to see good. you. I feel like I'm hanging out with my friend. I just wish you lived closer because we could really we be know. like real friends. I mean, we are real friends. We are we real friends. But I mean, like, you know, like I could touch you. Aww. <laughs> you're one of my favorite people. You're great. You're one of my Harry favorites. Loves group. You're, you're the real deal. You're the way, like, you're the way people should be made. <laughs> I adore you. Thank and the you. Hair. I love the hair. I just think you look great. I just love it. And you you're such a testimonial for healthy eating and healthy living. And uh, tell people about what you do for PBNSG because they could they could see you more than once a month if they like. Yeah, actually, tonight, the, I always, um, the day I am on this show, that night, I'm always hosting PBNSG, our uh, heart disease group. So PBNSG stands for Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And it's a nonprofit organization. I'm a volunteer for them. And they have lots of great guests all the time. So I think you pay $20 a month and you have access to, uh, I mean, they have guests like Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Campbell and Dr. Greger and Dr. Lyle. I'm going to host Dr. Lyle um, in December, I think. But I'm hosting somebody you might have heard of. Her name is Chef AJ on June 29th. But then they have also tons of just little um, smaller groups that are focused on what you need for support. So if you have heart disease or if you have type 2 diabetes, obesity, just getting started, they have all these little different um, focus groups or support groups. So if you want to check that out tonight, um, just go to pbnsg.org. It's 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Pacific, and I'll be hosting our heart disease support group tonight. Yeah, that's why you wanted the show on this particular day. So you didn't yes. up, uh, more than once. That's very clever. I'd love to see the Dr. Lyle one. That sounds great. Yeah, I think that one's in December. Yeah, I picked it because I was like, well, if I want to travel, then I have everything, you know, in one day that I, I'm committed to. I, that's so, great. Yeah. That's but thank you. I well, just thanks. love being on your show. I, I appreciate it. in class, I hope. I'll see you in improv. Yes, yeah. I'll be there. Great. And Diana, I'll see you in stand-up tonight. I, I got a whole nother life, guys. <laughs> just, just, you know, all right. Well, take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I really appreciate your support. I'd really love to get to 200,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please uh, please consider doing so. And come back at 4 p.m. for a bonus show all the way from Malaysia with Raw Chef Yin. She's making durian cookies. And tomorrow, our regular show is at 2 p.m. Feeling great with Lisa and Nate. And we're going to go over all kinds of kitchen tools that will help you on a plant-based diet, especially if you're